you can also have peace of heart and brain. You know, they say people who, may Allah protect all of you, people who always get heart attack, majority of them is because of the stress. And one of them is people who constantly, they're grieving, they're stuck, they're stuck in something, they don't, they don't want to let it go. That can cause your health problems. And for your own health, you need to let it go. Number three, one of the reasons why you, let, you need to let it go is because if you let it go, then you have less thing to worry about. If you have 30 things to worry about, right? And you let this go. This go, instead of 30 becomes 22. At least you have something less to worry about. So it's for your own good that when you forgive others, then you let things reduce in your life that you have to worry about. That is number three. Number four, one of the reasons why you should let things go is because you will never know what wrong you can do others tomorrow. You know today, I wrong, you wronged me today. But do you know how you will wrong someone tomorrow? If you say today, because he wrongs me, I'm not going to forgive him ever, right? Now, when you wrong him or her tomorrow, what do you expect them to do? Especially between husband and wife. I'm not going to forgive. I'm not going to let it go. Then what happens when you forgive, when you wrong somebody? You know, it's mentioned that one of the wise men, this is for husband and wife. A wise man has a son, and his son got married. When his son got married, the next day he came to visit them. When he came to the house to visit his son and his daughter-in-law, he asked the son, do you have a paper? The son said, yes, I do. He asked the son, do you have a pen, a pen or pencil? He said, yes, I do. He said, can you bring them? The son brought the paper and the pencil. Then he asked the son, do you have a eraser? He said, no. He said, I need the eraser. Get it. The son went out to the store, bought the eraser, came back. Then the father told him, write something on the paper. He said, what am I going to write? He said, write anything you wish. Anything in your mind, just write it. He wrote. Then the father told him, erase it. Can you erase it? He said, can you write something again? He wrote it. Can you erase it? He erased it. Can you write the third time? He wrote hey, Can you erase it? He erased it. Then the father, who was the wise man, he said to him, look, my son, you just got married, right? He said, yes. He said, your life and your, your wife is like this paper and this pencil. You, my son, and my daughter-in-law, you represent this pencil. The white paper is represent this world. As you live on this world, you will write so many things on this paper. Which means, you will do so many wrong things on this earth. But you have to always have eraser. To keep erasing on this paper, so that the paper doesn't get full. Because, if you don't erase it, and you keep writing, and you keep writing, what do you think is going to happen? At some point, the paper will become full. And when it becomes full, you know what happens? I'm looking for Maulana. What does that mean? I want divorce. Because there's no place to write anything anymore. That's it. It's full. Right? But if you have eraser, whenever he writes, you erase it. Whenever she writes, you erase it. The paper will stay empty as long as you live together. That is the wisdom that in life we need to learn how to erase this. <coughs> Rasulullah is one of the examples. Good Quran said, لَكَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ You want an example? The Prophet said no. The Prophet and Ahlul Mecca, what happened? When he came and conquered Mecca, and he arrested them, and captured them, and he was asking them, and these are the people who hurt the Prophet made the prophet left Mecca against his will. He walked from Mecca to Medina. His feet was bleeding. The prophet left the scene that he loved him. And he was able to capture them. 
And when he asked them, ma tadhunnuna anni sanah bikum. What do you think I'm going to do to you? What was the answer? Anta kareem ibn kareem. Then the prophet looked at them and he says, idhabu fa'antumun. That's the prophet. This is the prophet's akhlaq towards the enemies, huh? Not a Muslim, not a brother. No, these are the enemies of Islam. These are the mushrikeen. Not only that you come to Imam Ali alayhi salam, another example of Imam Ali, where he was teaching us the tolerance and how to learn to forgive. You know, there's mention that one day Imam Ali was sitting, and suddenly he saw these three men brought a man with them, with them to Imam Ali. And they said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, we want you to also to kill this person for us. Imam Ali said, what's the matter? What did you do? They say, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, this man killed our father. Imam Ali says, what is the proof? They say, ask him. Imam Ali asked him, the man, did you kill their father? Say, yes, I did. You did? Say, yes, I did. What happened? He said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, he has the story. I am a shepherd. I have animals that I take care of. These people, their father was a farmer. My animals ran into his farm. They ate some of his farm. They destroyed it. So what happened? This, their father took a rock and threw at one of my animals, and the animal died. What I did, I took the same stone. He, he, he threw at my animal. And I threw at him back. And he died. That's what happened. Now, that's what happened? Yes. Imam Ali said, okay. But here's the rule. The rule is, in Islam, you cannot kill a human being for killing animal. What you can do is to ask him to replace one. Either there's something similar to whatever the amount that you lost, one, two. Or you can ask him to pay you the amount that the animal costs. You have your choice. But you don't have the right to kill him. So since you're dead, here's what we're going to do. We have to kill you too. You have to do this us. So it's okay, I'm here on I agree. But I have a request. So what is the request? Can I go home and come back in three days? When I go home and come back, after I told you you're going to get killed, and you want me to let you go, say yes. Mama said, no, I'm not going to let you go. You want to leave? You can leave under one condition. What is it? If you can bring me one person who can guarantee you that you will come back, then I'll let you go. He started looking at the crowd. We're looking, who's going to guarantee? Huh? Suddenly his eyes, his eyes got on Abu Dhar al -Ghabar. Ya Abadar, I want you to guarantee me. No, what? Me? What? Please, I want you to guarantee me. So you're sitting somebody, the judge tells him he's, he's going to get killed in 10 days, but he gives a guarantee and he tells you, please. And you know if he doesn't show up, that's it, you're going to go. Abu Dhar said, me? Yes, I would have wanted to guarantee me, and I'll come back in three days. Abu Dhar was, okay, I'll guarantee you. People like Abu Dhar, are you? If he doesn't come back, that means you are dead. Abu Dhar said, that's fine. He will come. Okay. Abu Dhar went to my wife. Ya Amir al I'll guarantee him. Would you guarantee him? Yes. Okay. Abu Dhar, you are not leaving my side. You have to stay where you can be located and see for three days until he comes, then you can leave. So, Abu Dhar guaranteed him the man left. Everybody was looking at the time. The first day came, they got nothing. The second day came, the third day came, nothing. In the evening, right after Maghribain, the man showed up. Allah. He came. Then, people were wondering, who in the world would get an opportunity to run away with his life 
and then come back again, knowing he's going to get killed. Allah. When he came to Imam Ali, Imam Ali said, he said, I came. Imam Ali said, okay. How about that? You can leave. Imam Ali said, okay. But Imam Ali was hanging around to see what's going to happen. Then he looked at the hikmah of Imam Ali. Then Imam Ali asked him, the man, say, Ya Rajul, you get the opportunity to run away, to leave. You can just leave the country and go. Why did he come back? Then he said to Imam Ali, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Raja'atu li'anni khashid. He said, I came back because I'm afraid people will think there is no longer trust. He trusted me. I gave him my word. I want to stick by my word. And that's why I came. Imam Ali says, MashaAllah. Imam Ali said to Abu Dhar, Ya Abu Dhar, now you, your turn. Why did you guarantee a man? You don't know him. He doesn't relate to you. Nothing. But you guarantee him. What happened? Abu Dhar says, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Khashid, I'm also, I got scared that people will think there is no trust in him. Allah. As soon as Abu Dhar said this, the three young men who came and their father got killed, they turned to Imam Ali. They said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Afauna, we forgive him, he can leave. I want to say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why? You were asking for him to be killed. And now you forget. They say yes. What? I say, Khashina an taqool al nasu la al afwa bayna We don't want people to think there is no forgiveness anymore. We forgive. We forgive. Look at the hikma of Imam Ali. In one instant, he was able to solve the murder case with forgiveness. That is the teaching of Abu Bayn. Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wasalam, they taught us the lesson of forgiveness. Imam Zayn al Abidin, sallallahu alayhi wasalam. He was sitting in his house. One day, his servant, she was carrying water, and Imam Zayn al Abidin was sitting. And as she was walking with the water, she dumped the whole water on Imam Zayn. Imam Zayn al Abidin wasn't sure what happened. He looked at her. When she looked at Imam Zayn al Abidin, she said, She read this ayah in Surah Al Imran. Wal kaadhimin al ghayr. Ya Abna Rasulullah, please hide your, hand, your anger. Then Imam said to her, Kalam to ghayr. I'm not a man. Then she says, وَلْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those who want to forgive others. Then Imam says, أَفَوْتُ أَنْكِ أَنْ تَحُرَّ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ I forgave you. Not only I forgave you. No, you are free. You are not longer slave. Go, go, go. You are free. In just one instant, Imam forgave her and let it go. Where are we with the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt? Where are we? When you come to the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt, Compare the akhlaq of Ali al-Bayt to us and our life today. Not only the brothers and sisters, you come to the life of Ali al-Bayt. Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. Did we need how much he forgave a man, a shami, who came and were cursed on him? And Imam turned, and his response was, and Ya Rajul, in kunta gariban, awinaq, wa in kunta jai'an, at amnaq. Say, if you are a stranger, no room, no place, say, we want, make sure that you show, we, we will show to you. If you don't have a food, we will give you food. If you don't have a cloth, we will clothe you. That is the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt. Today in a fa family, you see a family where there is a father, there is a wife, there is a children, and there is holding grudge years. Nobody wants nobody want to let it go. The father is angry at the mother. The mother is angry at the children. The children are angry at the both father and the mother. Why? Nobody wants to let it go. 20 years ago something happened. We still hold this in our heart. Now let's Imam Hussein teach us how to let it go. This majority of Ahlul Bayt, 
It's supposed to be educational, a lesson for us, where we can apply in our daily lives. One of the lessons from Imam Hussein is the lesson of tonight. When Imam Hussein, on his way to Karbala, they stopped him. When they stopped him, before he even got, because Imam Hussein was going to Kufa. When he got to the location where there is a, a way to go to Kufa, there is a way to go also to Karbala. They diverted the path of Imam Hussein from Kufa to Karbala. And when he went to Karbala, even before he got to Karbala, one of the leaders of the army was Hurbun Yazid al Rayah. Who, when he met Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, they were thirsty, they were hungry. And Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, received them. And he welcomed them. And when he received them, they were thirsty. They didn't have any water. Then Hor asked Imam Hussein, do you have any water that we can drink? Imam Hussein said, show me. Then Imam Hussein said to them, listen, as thirsty as you are, you and your horses, do not drink the water to your satisfaction. Why? Because it might kill you in one place. Allah. And today, when you check the doctors, they tell me, it's called water intoxication. When somebody is so tasty, you haven't drunk water for so long, and when you get the water, you drink it all at once, it might lead to your death. Imam Hussein told them back in that time, he said, don't drink all at once. Take some and wait. Give your stomach a time, and then you can drink something later. And he told them, your animals also do the same thing. But as for your animals, he says, spray some water on them so it will cool them off. And they do not. After Imam Hussein finished with them, Harbun Yazid al he was the one who was disturbing Imam Hussein's peace. And he said that. Until they get to Karbala. When they get to Karbala, they reach there. Because here is one of the lessons we need to learn about this, from the history. You know, when we talk about the media and how they can mislead, they can manipulate, back in those days, it was the same. Hor, before he came to meet Imam Hussein, they told him, Ya Hor, we have no any intention of killing Hussein. All we want to do is not to let Hussein to Kufa. That's all we want. So lead these soldiers and get to Hussein, and when you get to Hussein, don't let him come to Kufa. Just divert him to Karbala and let him there. And Hor did just that because that is what he was doing. So when he came, he got to Karbala. After three days in Karbala, when Saad came and all the armies, they came into Karbala. Then he saw. The letter came from Ubaidullah bin Ziyad to Umar bin Sa'ad. Ya Umar bin Sa'ad, we want you to attack Hussein on the night of Tasu'a. Then, Hur said, Umar bin Sa'ad, what is this about? That's not what the agreement was. That wasn't the agreement. So what are you talking about? First, Umar bin Sa'ad wouldn't want to listen to Hur bin Yazid al then he go back again. Ya Omar bin Sa'ad, before I came to Karbala, the agreement was, there is no fight, there is nothing. We just want to bother Imam Hussein to let him go. That's what the agreement. Why are you planning fight, bloodshed? What is this about? Omar bin Sa'ad wouldn't pay attention to him. Then he changed his question. Now the question is, Ya Omar bin Sa'ad, anta qatil rajul are you going to fight Hussein? Then the answer came, yes. Al Qatil Rajul, Qitalun, Aysawha, Tatiru Fiha Ru'us. The fight, that the least that will happen is the heads will be flying in this battle. You know, when Hur heard this, he started shivering. 
Get more beside look at him. He said, you know, why are you shivering? You're a hero, you're a strong man. What's happening to you? Then, after a few minutes, Hor said to him, إِنِّي أُخَيِّرُ نَفْسِي بَيْنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ The reason why I'm shivering, I'm trying to decide between Jannah and Hellfire. Which one should I choose? Allahu Akbar. And brothers and sisters, this is one of the lessons for tonight. In the critical moment, that that, to make the right decision, is also critical. Hur said, Fawallahi la akhtaw ala al-jannati shayla. He said, but I'm going to tell you now, Umar bin Sa'ad, I will not choose over the heaven anything. Nothing comes above the heaven. The war happened. Hur was sitting on his horse, and he was looking left and right. Now what should he do? Now he wants to go to Hussein. But now the question is, would Imam Hussein forgive him the lesson of tonight? He was carrying his sword up. Then he turned the sword down. Allah. And you know, among the Arabs, back in those days, when you lift your sword up, that means you're for war. When it comes down, that means you're for peace. Hor turned the sword down. And he hit his horse to keep moving. The horse started moving. Leaving the army of Umar bin Sa'ad, going towards the army of Imam Hussein. When he got to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Habib al-Mudahir went and met him. He said, why are you coming here for? What do you want? He said, I want to talk to Imam Hussein. He said, what do you have for him? He said, I just want to talk to him. Can you let me talk to him? Imam Hussein heard. Look at the akhlaq of Africa. Imam Hussein didn't wait for him to come. Imam Hussein walked and met him. He said, Yaqub, what do you want? He said, Ya Aba Abdullah. And these are his words. Ana ladi ja'atuka fit tariq. Meaning, I'm the one who gave you and disturb you and gave you hard time. Look at it. But Allah is my witness that I didn't know that these people wanted to kill you. But all I'm here for at this moment is to ask you one question. Do I still have room for forgiveness? And there are even two. Do I still have room? Allah. Brothers, if you are to put yourself in the shoes of Imam Hussein Ali, the man who put you in hardship, disturbed you, and gave you a hard time, and led you to the place you are not planning to come to, and then he turns and says, I want you to forgive me. Who would you do? Now listen to Imam Hussein Ali, Immediately, with no hesitation, he said to her, And I said, If you're sincere and you're asking for forgiveness, he said, Allah forgive you. You know, brothers, well, listen to this lesson here of Imam Hussein. When Imam Hussein was, when the whole asked him, He didn't say, now do to Alec. No, he says, in tubta taballahu alayk. Allah will forgive you, not me. You know why? Because when you hurt at the bait, you are not hurting them personally, you are hurting Allah. That's why the hadith says, Man abgadha fa fatima, man abgadha faqad abgadha Allah. Because hurting them is hurting Allah. So when Imam Hussein answered, he says, and the Allah Don't worry about me. Allah is the one who's going to do. Then he said, 
three months and said, Allah, inni laka tahab. And he is sincerely asking Allah for Then Imam Hussain told him, but come in. Come. He came and joined the group. Then Imam Hussain told him, can you get off your horse? Then he said to Imam Hussain, I have one simple request for him. See, what is it? He said, I do better on the horse than to fight on, the on my feet. I can help better if I'm on my horse. Then Imam Hussain said, that's fine, stay on your horse. On the day of Ashura, he came to Imam Hussain and he said to Imam Hussain, I have one simple request. What is it? He said, I don't want anybody of these soldiers to go first unless I'm killed. He said, why? He said, maybe Allah will wash my face with the sin that I committed by putting you in that situation. I want to be forgiven. So I don't want any one of these people to go first. So allow me, give me the privilege. So I get to die first for whatever sin that I committed. Imam Musa said, I gave you that, Ya Allah. Some narrations say he had a son with him who was a teenager. Then he, go, he went back to Imam Musa and he said, Ya Abba Abdullah, I want to go first, but I don't want to go first. I want my son to go first. And look at the heck of her. He asked him, why? He said, I don't want to go first when I get killed and my son sees bloody or the way I get killed. I'm afraid he might change. So I want him to go first. So then I'm sure he dies on the love of Ahri Bay. Imam Hussein said, you are the father of whatever decision you make. For Abu Yazid al-Rayahi, he let his son to go to the battle for The son was killed. He went and picked his son and he was crying. And he says, maybe your blood will wash my face in the front of Zahra Ayyum al -Khira. But whatever I've done, I don't know of anything that I can do. So I can at least wash my face in front of Rasulullah, in front of Imam Ali, in front of Zahra, to say, at least I've done something. But with you getting killed, my son, your blood might wash my face. But now it's my turn to go and try to wash my own sin that I committed. He went to the battlefield. He started the battle. The narration said nobody comes in front of the heart unless he killed them. Hor fought so many soldiers and killed them until Hor got struck by the sword. When Hor was falling on the ground, he called his master, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, where he said, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Imam Hussein alayhi salam responded, Wa alayka salam ya Hor. And he ran towards him. When he got to Hor, Hor was in his final moment. He was bleeding. He wanted to say something, but he couldn't say it in that last moment. He wanted to say something, but he couldn't say it. Imam Hussein looked at him and he says, Ma akhta to ummuka in samatka hurra anta hurran fin dunya wal akhira. I said, Ya Hor, let me tell you something. Wallahi, your mother did not make a mistake when she named you Hor. Hor means a free man. I said, you're a free man in your thinking, in your decision. Many of those people were slaves. You made a right decision. Your mother didn't make a mistake when she called you Hor. 